Hello and welcome to Let's Play Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. My name is Jemalf and I'll be your gameplay commentator for this Let's Play. Here we go. Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead is a post-apocalyptic zombie survival roguelike. In this game you need to survive. You need to eat, you need to drink, you need to keep yourself warm, you need to get enough sleep in addition to staying alive against zombies and other even more dangerous creatures in the world. It is a roguelike, it has ASCII graphics, but after you get used to it, you will have a very uh, entertaining and uh, very complex and uh, quite challenging game uh, to play. The game is open source, so you can download it for free from the game website. Uh, the links are in the video description if you are interested in those. Quickly showing you the options, I am playing with the Celsius and metric system because I understand those better, being from uh, Finland, Europe. Um, always have the autosave on if you play this game yourself, because the game is in, in, is in development, it might crash, and I also recommend taking backups of the save folder, especially if you play the same world with multiple characters, because if you get unlucky, that might get corrupted. And um, I'm using the options here to automatically drop the non-watertight containers and I have, have capped the skill rust at skill levels. In the game you gain skills by using them and uh, if you don't use them in the vanilla cataclysm they, they decrease all the way to zero but uh, with the capped at skill level they only drop to the whatever level you have gained so in a way you lose the progress to the next level if you don't use the skill. My uh, viewport width and height is 46 by 41 and I am using a custom Topaz 8 font in 12 by 12 size. Details for that is also in the video description if you want to look for it and do check the Cataclysm wiki and the compile page for information about the square fonts. I'm playing with static spawns. I find that much more uh, much more uh, entertaining gameplay and more fulfilling experience because with static spawns the zombies and other enemies are spawned at the world generation instead of being continuously uh, continuously spawned as you move around the world like they do in the dynamic mode. So with static mode, at least in theory, you can uh, clear a town out of zombies and claim it totally for yourself. And uh, I like that. So uh, those are the options. And uh, without further ado, I will uh, get into the game and load my character, Owen Lewis. I have played this character for 80 minutes already. Unfortunately, I ran into some uh, audio issues with that footage, so I didn't make it public, but I did upload them as unlisted videos, and you can find the links in the video description, or you can check the 2-3 minute trailer that I made uh, to summarize the journey, that you might have seen already before this video. So, that blinking at symbol here in this map is me and these green symbols that the blue square is moving over is uh, is the town I'm talking about that and I'm about to explore. I started all the way here in the north where the uh, plus sign is the evacuation shelter. I walked southeast into this town here I uh, found some supplies, something to drink, something to eat, some clothes, but I didn't find any uh, backpacks or anything to carry the supplies with me. Plus, the place was full of zombies, so uh, it was too dangerous for my uh, early early character, and uh, I went west. I found another evacuation shelter, I found a science lab, uh, but I couldn't enter it because I don't have a science ID card yet. And uh, I also found a group of... Um, drug heads or such because they were carrying marijuana and stuff. I got some clothes from them but nothing, uh, nothing too special and that's when I found this town. And what makes this very interesting is that uh, I haven't seen any shops here and I haven't seen any zombies. Which makes this ideal for my early character to look for some supplies and uh, then I can start looking into the more dangerous areas where the shops are for some uh, other, uh, other gear I need. In this uh, 
in this house I am currently at, again the white at symbol is my character and I can look around, there are different items in this room I'm in, there's a window here to the south and through the window I can see a squirrel here uh, down south and that is also shown in the top right where it shows that I can see a squirrel south of my character. And in the top right is also my hit points, the different body parts, head, torso, arms and legs. And now I can see that my current uh, wielded weapon is nail board. My current stats, including the fact that I have little pain because I fought those, those zombies there in the east. And then we can see the weather, cloudy, 19 celsius. It's spring, it's day one of the game and time is uh, 4 p.m. or uh, 15, 15.38. And at the moment I have 79 experience. And in this game you gain experience over time. The higher your uh, character's morale is, which is shown with that uh, smiley face, which is at the moment not smiling. Um, because my morale is at zero. Higher your morale, more experience you gain over time. And if your morale is really low, you will... Uh, you will get penalties for things and uh, your character will refuse to do some things like crafting. And if I look at my character screen, I created a character with strength 8, dexterity 10, intelligence 8 and perception 11. And then I can see my encumbrance that depends on, uh, on the clothes and gear I am wearing. And uh, then are my skills. I have already leveled up melee to 44% uh, towards the second level. And uh, some other skills I have uh, also uh, trained by using them. When I have experience points in the experience pool, doing something uh, towards the skills will improve them. If I don't have any experience, the skills won't increase. And it is possible to disable skill growth to the skill by pressing spacebar. So for example, if I'm fighting some uh, some enemies and I don't want to use the experience I have in the pool to uh, melee skill, I can disable it. Or I can disable a throwing skill or, or whatever. Or I can just keep them all on. When I created my character, I chose some positive and negative traits. My character is quick, so I can easily uh, outrun the zombies, or at least that's my idea. I'm a fast reader, and I have high adrenaline, so I will give a little bonus in very dangerous situations. I don't know what, the, what that exactly means. But I also have some negative traits. My character is far-sighted, so I need to have reading glasses on to be able to read anything. And there's also penalties to melee accuracy and some, uh, some crafting if I don't have those glasses on. But I started with some and I, I think I already found at least one spare in case those gets broken. But perhaps most importantly, my character is also asthmatic. I started with an in inhaler. Uh, I haven't haven't had to use it yet, but uh, over time I will have to keep finding more inhalers to keep myself uh, keep myself out of the severe physical limitations when the asthma asthma attack comes. Right, but. Uh, Enough, uh, enough talk about that. I will uh, start exploring here. Looking around this room. Uh, right, I forgot to mention and show my inventory. Because in this building I found backpack and two messenger bags which took my carrying volume up to 119. When you start with a new character you only have carrying capacity of volume you are wearing jeans at the start, so you can have uh, something in the pockets of those jeans, but that's it. So the first thing you really need to do is get some carrying capacity, either clothes with more pockets or some bags. And that's what I found here in this building. Until, uh, until this point I was about 30 volume or something and couldn't carry many things. I have found crowbar and big lock kit so I can get into the buildings uh, silently if needed or more silently than smashing through the windows. But uh, what I will do now is uh, start looking through these buildings here and uh, getting getting all the items I have some use for and uh, including checking things like this dresser here that has some duct tape in it and a sewing kit. Yeah, I will take that. 
I will close the curtains in these windows so I'm not spotted. Oh, another pair of reading glasses. I now have two extra in case the ones I'm wearing get broken. I'm not going to take the succeed in business because I'm playing the Cataclysm version 0 0.4 and in this game the NPCs are disabled so speech and barter won't be much of a use to me. Oh, look at that. Two more reading classes. Don't mind if I do some can, can of coke, another one. Some PP ammo. Hmm. If I could find a PP gun, then I guess that would be useful. I will pick them up for now. And uh, that radio I picked up, it's not much of a use, but uh, if I listen to it, I turn it on, and then if I wait, the radio says, Emergency shelter. This is FEMA Camp 44175. Supplies are limited. Please bring supplemental food, water and bedding. This is FEMA Camp 44175, a designated long-term emergency shelter. So yeah, there's an seems like an automated automated emergency message from that radio. It's not much use to me, so I will just unload the batteries of that radio and uh, drop the radio itself here. And here we have the kitchen. Um, let's take a look at the room. The scissors. Scissors will be useful. I can use those to pick apart some clothes to rags. There's some gallons here, but I'm I'm not picking them up yet. I might might pick them up later on. And looking at this fridge here, there's some uh, nice items, including a glass bottle of rotten milk. The fact that the milk is rotten is not good, but with the glass bottle and the rags I might get later on, with my scissors, I can and then if I find some booze, I can make Molotov cocktails. So let's empty this glass bottle of milk by unloading it to the ground. The milk, milk stays there, but uh, I now have a glass bottle. And that glass bottle, uh, actually, not that I think of it. I will take everything from here I absolutely want to. Every item, every possible item I might, might want at any point. And I will dump the items I don't need into one of the buildings when I'm when I go over capacity so I will take the rubber gloves and the bleach the other bleach and the string I won't take the empty plastic bottles I'll get uh, plenty of those I'm closing the curtains not only to limit the field of vision or chance of enemies to spot me, but it also tells me that I have looted this house. I sometimes, I don't always remember, but I tend to leave notes that I have looted a house. But now that I think of it, I didn't actually loot that, because I didn't visit the bathroom. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. And ah, that good thing and I came back to check. Look at this. All kinds of flu medicine, some bandages. Vitamins. Oh, I actually had vitamins already and I have eaten one. More bandages. Yeah, that was almost a bad thing to miss there. But now that building is looted. Let's continue here. I have a safe mode on, that green text safe. Uh, I can move around freely and in case I see something hostile, my character will automatically stop and not, not move until I confirm that I actually want to move. This door was not locked. There's a frying pan, that's first first good uh, tool I have found. Because in frying pan I can boil water. Um, but I will change that into, into a pot if I find one. In the pot you can uh, cook and boil everything. Let's close those, uh, 
close those windows. There's some thread here. I don't need the self-esteem for dummies. I'll take the socks. Is there anything in this dresser? Yes, there is plenty of stuff. Oh, this trench coat. Okay, I'm already already getting uh, getting over volume here. So I guess wait a minute. I will uh, I will take those clothes I can uh, pick apart, and I will go into the door of this building. And here I will start piling up some stuff. Uh, everything I don't need at the moment. Especially the gallon of chunks. And I will leave um, food and drinks here that don't spoil. The water. Um, two cans of coke. I will keep one. I will leave the beef jerky. Uh, I will leave the potato chips, but I will keep the apples, I will keep the apple cider, I will drop the root beer. And the bubble wrap, soldering iron. Uh, I will drop the frying pan, I don't need that yet. I will drop the BB ammo, I don't need the thread yet. I don't really need the duct tape yet. I will keep those batteries. So let's drop those. And I will take these, um, take this t-shirt I have in the inventory and take that into racks with my scissors. Uh, do I have a tank top on? No, I don't. Hmm. And it even fits. Let me wear that. I will change the order of my clothes soon enough. Uh, I don't need the suit when I wear the trench coat, which will make me encumbered, but let's get back into that later on. Uh, so that t-shirt as well, disassemble, yes. Can I take apart those socks? Am I wearing socks? Okay, let's wear one. Let's drop those. I have a bike helmet, rubber gloves, moccasins, bandana. Let's drop two reading glasses here as well. So what I'm doing here, I'm piling up some items and I will leave a note here that this is storage. Loot left behind. So I can come back later on if I want to, or I can uh, take them into one of these buildings from all these houses and uh, know that that is a building where all the useful loot is. Uh, Twin the gloves, dust mask and stay. And now it's much better. But now let's take off the socks. Let's take off the sneakers and actually put on the socks first. And then the sneakers. And uh, the trench coat is on top of everything, but the tank top is there in the middle. So let me take off all the clothes I have on the torso. And arm guards, utility vest, uh, t shirt. All right, so then let's wear the tank top. The tank top it's, is fitting. It has minus one encumbrance, so it actually helps me with encumbrance with these other clothes. So let's take the t-shirt, wear that, then put on the utility vest, then wear the trench coat, and then top of that the hard arm guards. So at the moment I have encumbrance in torso a bit because of all the backpacks, trench coat and stuff, and in the arms, so I have some penalty in the ranged ranged weapons. But now that I have dumped all the stuff here, I have a volume of 19 and I'm free to move around again. I can, can, can come back into this building to uh, um, deconstruct all these building, all these uh, furniture, if I need the wood and nails. Let's 
pants there. Oh, there's another dresser here. Tank top. Tank top. I can take those apart. There's a sweater. A sweater is nice and warm. So I will take that into that pile. Uh, I will take the Playboy. That will make me happier when I read it. Duct tape. Yeah, I think those are the ones I want. No hostile animals everywhere. Anywhere. There's a double bed here. Nothing here in the bathroom. All right. Drop here the sweater. I will drop the tank tops. And uh, for now, I will also drop the drop the Playboy. I will pick up some rags that I got when I tore apart those t-shirts. Because if I find some booze, I can create that uh, Molotov cocktail with the glass bottle I have. So that building is now marked with S. It's storage, the other one is looted. So moving on to the next building. And that door is locked, so I will use my crowbar on it. That I will actually... Well, it was on the A letter, but I like to rename the tools and uh, items for uh, certain letters. Crowbar is C. I might have the uh, sewing kit in S. I might have my uh, weapon at W. I might have lighter in L. And uh, what else? Bandages in uh, in B and things like that. I've been doing uh, this kind of uh, kind of that uh, the items I use they are in some sort of a logical letter. I've been doing that ever since the times of NetHack, I think. So now when I come to a door, I can easily just activate with A, and I know that crowbar is C. So I can start uh, start trying to pry this door open. And my character managed to do it on the fourth attempt. So uh, let's start looking in this building. There's flashlight. There's a pot. So that's good. Now I don't need the frying pan anymore. I left uh, left to the other building. Uh, I might drop my pocket knife for something like a steak knife. It's better for a butcher. There's even another pot here. I don't need don't need several. Here in this fridge, I will leave the frozen dinners behind. Those will uh, spoil quite fast. But everything else I am picking, and if nothing else, I'm taking taking the food to the door of this building, or pile them into that same building I took the other stuff to. Uh, socks... A raincoat might come in handy. Bike helmet, I don't need a third one. I will take those. Okay, since that's our empty. Desk. Huh. It's another pair of reading glasses. Cigarettes and soldering iron. Nothing in the bathroom. I already had one under the hood. Let's take those sneakers, have a spare, put it in my supply pile. Sunglasses will come in handy. More stuff in this dresser here. A spare cargo pants for me. I will pick those up. Another Playboy. I don't need another one. Can't see anything in the north. So uh, pulling the curtains. And uh, I think this building was uh, was now looted. Uh, but this building has a fence, so uh, let's leave um, F here. There's fence, but this is looted. The fence, because when I found myself a hammer and uh, 
hammer and a screwdriver, I can uh, deconstruct furniture. Or I can smash these, uh, these fence apart if I need some wood and, uh, and nails. So uh, I'm taking the items I found in the, this building. The things I don't want to carry around just yet. Soldering iron. The pot. Don't need those things yet. The extra cargo pants, extra sneakers, the bandana, soft arm sleeves, the raincoat. Raincoat I might need if it starts raining, but I will uh, I will leave it here for now. Drop the potato chips. So I'm only carrying uh, orange juice, apple, apple cider, uh, drinks and food that will spoil. And I have one can of coke in case I need to run, outrun something that will uh, give me some stimulant. Um, I wanted to take those flashlights I have and unload two of them from the batteries and then just drop the flashlights here and uh, just keep the batteries and one flashlight all right that's good move uh, move into the second building and what is that oh that building is mined because i have perception over over 10 I can see those landmines and other traps, but uh, I guess the all the all the blown up walls would have been a little giveaway even without that. Right, this is locked as well. Prying it open with my crowbar, pulling the curtains so I can uh, be here without any uh, any creatures bothering me. Uh, I don't see any zombies, but some uh, some bears or um, or cougars or wolves or something might might get into this house so i don't need another pot but this glass bottle of whiskey is awesome because i can create some uh, molotov cocktails with it well stocked fridge here very very well stocked i will pick all everything else but the frozen dinners um, those will spoil before I before I get a chance to eat them. And uh, I'll have some other food instead. Let's close these as, these as well. Another self-esteem for dummies. Pants and shorts in the dresser. Don't need those. Let's show the squirrel here. Uh, well, Mr. Squirrel, it's your lucky day. I don't want to fight you right now. Um, let's uh, empty that uh, rotten milk. Well, actually, I, I have... Uh, Three bottles of milk. Did I unload them all? No, it was oh, one bottle with three. Okay, so now I have two two glass bottles. I have have a bottle of whiskey with 25, 21 units of alcohol. So if I open the Open the crafting screen, I can see that with rack, glass bottle and 14 units of alcohol, I can create a Molotov cocktail. So that's exactly what I will do. So now I have one. I can't create another one until I find more booze. But I have one, egg, one Molotov cocktail now that uh, just in case I get into trouble, I can use that. And this house is a fence. But it's also looted. Hmm. 
that's mind mind house it's actually a good thing because I can see those if I uh, if a bear or uh, some wolf spider uh, wanders into the town I can maybe use that to escape it in case I can't outrun it yet another locked door here taking it taking it with the crowbar there's a US weekly here uh, I don't need the speed skill I think I will pick it up anyway Nothing in the desk. Plenty of bookcases here. No dangerous animals in the sides. I can craft antennas from the butter knives, but I'm not carrying them with me. There's another bottle of whiskey. More Molotov cocktails from the empty, empty fridge. An empty bedroom. Apart from this dresser that has wool poncho in it, I won't take the bee coats. But I will check if I can disassemble it. No, I can't. Alright. So, pretty much nothing here. Wait. Can see question marks there. Something is moving there in the northeast, but I don't know what it is. Almost missed the bathroom again. Almost again missed several bandages. There's a deer there in the northeast. I can see the D there in the very top of the screen. I can hunt deers, but they will uh, outrun me if I don't have some uh, something to throw uh, throw at them. So this building is very much um, looted. It's good to leave those signs, especially if you take little time between sessions. So actually you remember what you were doing. And I can easily remember that I have all the, all the useful items are either on me or they are here in this one building with the, with the map marker. Well, I guess I could check that mind building out because I can see all the mines, but I do have to check these items out because there might be mines under the items. Sometimes when someone mines a house like this, there's actually some sort of a stash something that they are protecting with those mines well another bottle of whiskey don't mind if i do but it seems that there isn't really anything here unless there's something in the fridge well there is quite a lot of stuff in the fridge but i'm not sure if it's worth Worth all the mines. Let's dump that milk right away here. It's another glass bottle, and I need to be careful with my movement. So I don't step into the. Oh, iodine, ta iodine tablets. Those are relatively rare. Some flu medicine. And I guess that is it. Nothing too special in this building. It's just mind. Huh. Well. Um, oh, I didn't, didn't check that one building out. Let's leave here a simple mines. I usually mark any minefields, traps or such in case I come into the area without 10 perception or if uh, if I want to find an area where I can uh, utilize those traps to deal with enemies then I can uh, easily run back to that. Opening the, opening the front door with screw bars, closing the windows, There's some cigarettes here in the entrance hall of this building. Anything in the fridge. Plenty of stuff again. 
Since I am hungry and thirsty, I will eat a meat sandwich. Those get spoiled first, usually. And I will drink uh, apple cider. And doing that made me happy. I get, got some enjoyment out of the sandwich and some enjoyment out of the apple cider. Being more motivated, I will gain some uh, experience points faster. Not too much with that little, uh, that little uh, morale, but anyway. There's a sewing kit here, always useful. I can start using that experience to level up my... Uh, Level up my tailoring to make my uh, clothes fit or reinforce them or repair them. I'm not taking the spray can. I could leave notes for my other characters, but uh, I don't think I will bother with that. And as far as I know, there's no other use for it. Flashlights and mop. Fain pills, anything else? No. I think I can open windows from the inside. Yeah, yeah, I can. I, uh, and I think I can also pry them open with crowbar from the outside. Okay, that was that was all of this building. So that is now loaded. And I will move on. And I will also end this first video here. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this even that uh, even that it's kind of uh, in a way boring without too much action, but this is very important survival wise and this game is very much about patience you can usually outrun any enemies you find most of them you can't always but most of the time or at least you can avoid them if you are careful and uh, here uh, i'm finding plenty of oh i even find some mary jane um i'm finding uh, i don't need the third so let's pick the extra messenger back to my uh, to my uh, item pile, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm gathering gathering supplies, hoping to find uh, find some items here, and uh, I think when I have some experience, now that I have been walking around, I will uh, maybe train my tailoring up. Maybe I will go collect some rocks and uh, train train throwing, so that I have some range range skill when I eventually have to go against the zombies. The zombies are often where there are stores, so uh, and in the stores are plenty of items I will eventually need. So, um, sooner or later I will need to get to... Uh, we'll need to get to uh, areas with, uh, with zombies as well. And when I get there, I will uh, have to do something to survive. So that building, while I was while I was ending already, that uh, got looted already, looted as well. Right, continuing to the next building in the next video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button on the video. That helps me to make more. And uh, do do subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet for more Cataclysm and other Let's Plays I make. And do check out my channel's videos tab and the playlists for all the Let's Plays I have done. In case you are new to my channel, there's over uh, 1300 videos at the time I'm recording this. And uh, all, our, all videos are organized into playlists for easy viewing. But... Without further ado, I uh, wish you an awesome day, and I hope to see you in the part 2 of Let's Play Cataclysm. Until then, take care, bye bye.